Well, things don't get much more exciting than this. Firstly, we have some nice card at quite a price, which I think is worth the investment when you're taking art seriously and you've got to draw your doodles, your super doodles, okay? And I've got a black marker today and a gold pen, really quite dangerously exciting this. And as I sit here before me, I am like aghast and awash with notions of what I could begin to conceive. And given this paper is quite pricey and these pens are relatively expensive, this gold pen was over four pounds which is much more expensive than the old ones, and I'm a bit disappointed about that. But you get a quality gold from it nonetheless, and I think that could be worth it. Although that money could have gone beer, but never mind. So, looking into this realm of fancies, I am aghast and agog at the options available to me. I mean, there is just free reign here. I am free. There are no rules. There is no restrictions, no hindrances, no oppression, no lawful dictates that display what you should and shouldn't do. You can even do real filth if you want, but I like to think I'm a little more profound than some sick fuck. So we move on. But the thing is, where do we begin? I mean, this is a gold pen, and this is a black pen, and they are both really amazing. And this is a beautiful sheet of paper, and I really want to get down to business. But I just don't know where to start. And the more I sit here, the more my, mount, my mind fountains into so many visions and wonders and thoughts and notions and theories and perspectives and insights and realizations that I realise the game's up. I, do, I think I'm flummoxed. I think I'm defeated. It's over. There's nothing I can do ever, ever more again. It's a shocking display of one man's ignorance, his futility, his weakness, his lack of direction, his unintelligence, his unvisionary mode. It's just... The fall of man, again, replete and rendered in this iniquity, in this, I know, iniquity wasn't even the right word. Why do I bother? Why do I bother? I'm caught between notions. It just comes to this, I am fraught with despair. How am I alone in this struggle? To what ends can I solve the problem? I need a good idea. But what? There are so many good ideas. Good ideas are ten a penny, really. The difference is in the working of the good idea. And that's the hard bit, which most people don't do once they've got a good idea. Like me. I am failing to achieve any level of good ideaness on this paper as we speak. Failing like a colossus right before your eyes. And I apologise for this impotence, which is the word I was looking for. This absolute abomination of ability rippling through your eyes right now. Just inadequacy rendered in inability. It's all too much. It's all too much. So I'm just going to have to waste the piece of paper, even though they're quite expensive, and just do something. We can't just sit here paralysed with fear because of this issue, this problem, this grand visionary expanse in front of me, which you might argue doesn't even need changing. I mean, that could be the art itself. Just hand that in and go, wow. The white plane of everything. Because what you don't see is all the ideas that haven't gone into it. But they were there in the 
creation of the piece, you see. This is where art gets pretentious and bollocks. So it's really exciting being here today. And I think we're going to do something. We're going to have to do something. But I, 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 can't, I can't just start anywhere. I have to start with some kind of semblance of good idea. And I don't know what to do, really. I mean, there's so many options. Um, let's think of something. I don't know. There's, what, chairs, people, buildings, structures, houses... Vehicles, planes, trains, automobiles, criminals, policemen, members of society, innocent bystanders, shopkeepers, skyscraper designers, architects, thrillers, chillers, killers and wombats. I mean there are just, just so many things out there, aren't there? Stick. There's a stick there, branch sort of thing. I use it for self-defense when no one ever attacks. So I don't get attacked in my premises, it's really nice. Very friendly, very civilised I always find. The right to own a premises and not be physically violated. Uh, so that's ten points for social well-being there. But we're still absolutely devoid of where we're going to go. And, and I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think that's particularly acceptable. And thus, I'm going to do it. I'm going to just do it. No, I dare not. What if I ruin the rendition and the piece? Oh, let's try. Well, that was a waste of money, wasn't it? Fuck's sake, what have I achieved in this? Absolute squalor. It's just like looking into the whirlpool of dismal failure once more. So, I'm going to dare to use the gold, because only gold can rescue pretty much everything. Gold is sacred for a reason. I don't really know what that reason is. But never mind, we'll go with it. I wonder if it's because it's an excellent conductor, as well as being rather rare, shiny and beautiful. Who knows? I think even God likes gold. He wouldn't make things of gold like he did, unless he thought gold himself was pretty special. Indeed, the New Jerusalem, when it comes down from space in the future, will... Uh, be hugely plated with gold, I believe, as well as many precious gems. This is the word of the Lord according to the Bible, you see. Now, I'm not going to do all that because that's just going to be here for fucking ages and I can't be asked. So I'm just going to do it in bits to be weird. I mean, there's precision and then there's me. And I don't like routine, being told what to do, responsibility, or sobriety particularly. But I do do some of them, particularly sobriety when I don't want it, just to rub along with the rest of society who I pretty much think, on the whole, are really just a bunch of dips really, aren't they? And fucking mean a lot of them as well. But you know, that, that's alright. You know, ugliness isn't a crime. Although, if we really raised our aesthetic standards, it could be. But that's just a bit harsh, isn't it? Hating for someone for being a munter. But then, I suppose I'm the one with the ugly soul to even think like that. But then you realise now it's bad that some people really do just mean. And I mean seriously, hideously mean. And the best thing to do in that situation is just to leg it. Just to get the fuck out of there. You never know what they might have done to get into that unfortunate predicament. They might be cast as voodoo warlords in some pre-Buddhist life. Who knows? 
I just don't think man is born equal, like the Bible says, really, because we've all got different sized willies. And that's not equal by any stretch of the imagination. So I don't actually see that as technically accurate. But never mind. If size mattered, we'd have a pornocracy, which is a government of porn stars. Thankfully, porn is still generally regarded as quite filthy, lewd, debauched, arguably hell-fired if you're religious, and a bit unpleasant quite a lot of the time. That's certainly not how I used to make love to women, if I could get it up at all. No, when I was young and a strapping man, I did ride the beast of the back of a few fair fillies like the Derby champion Throttler. But, um... Those exciting days of young love it seems unnumbered, and I'm left to stare into whirlpools of bollocks on a pape, making little girl fingers. I mean, it's pathetic, really, isn't it? I'm a grown man, for God's sakes. What's it come to? This. This shoddiness. This absolute cackery. This inability to say hello to cheese. <sighs> what am I even talking about now? Saying hello to cheese. Christ, mate, you're a douche sometimes. Just trying to be funny, aren't you? Trying to be funny. Spazza. Right. I'm going to come out of here and do this. Ooh. I just got an effect in my eyes. So it might not be the end of the world. It was quite a trippy effect. I sort of entered the whirlpool at one level, visually, through a vicarious field of perception. And there I was, momentarily, fleetingly, there, lost in the epicentre of the whirlpool. And it did, my, my vision jolted somewhat, and I was almost out of control and free reeling. Have it, mate, have it. That's all I can say at this juncture. I mean, really, we're living on the edge here. We are living on the edge. And I'm looking over the edge and into the abyss. It is a Sunday after all. So there we are. Lovely jubbly. Everyone's a hairy walnut. Now the art piece is really coming together in this whirlpool effect of utter toss. I'm very slapdash, I do apologise. I'm certainly no graffiti artist, but then neither do I deface public buildings. For I am a responsible citizen, or so I pretend, or try to be, or at least allude to, to get away with whatever it is I might be doing that anyone might be wanting to kill me for or cart me off to hospital or put me in prison for trying to look into a whirlpool and have some fun on this radical holy day of peace and the Sabbath. So this is what I'd like to do. And now, how can we make this extra cosmic? I'm seeing good visuals now. This is quite interesting as we look into the zone. How do we do this? How do we do this? I am... I think we're going to have to put direction arrows on. See, now we're going somewhere. Now we've got an original idea formulating out of the ether, out of thin air. Out of little more than effort. Sure, it's not exactly Michelangelo, but it's not nothing, is it? It's not nothing. And you are seeing the creative process in effect. It's more exciting than wearing nipple tassels, half clad, on a charging dishwasher. 
Now it's really starting to get heaven's biscuits. Starting to come alive, we're starting to feel a flow of energy. Starting to, it's almost kinetic, the visual of the piece. Oh yes, oh yes. This is simply staggering. See, I wasn't lazy there, I didn't go for the one option, I went for the two. Not lazy. Right, so now we're really careering down on a downward scope into this whirlpool of oblivion. And it's just more exciting than a, a week in Benidorm really, isn't it? Maybe I'm making it too havoc. Maybe maybe they should turn them all into little planes. As though they're all spiralling down into into a concentric circle of some description of Utter bewildering chaos. Now here we are, tripping away in the mainframe, and everything in Britain is generally clockwork. And that's the genius of Britain, I always find. It's reliable, i.e., Britain is completely unlike me on a general day-to-day -day basis. They get shit done in the cities, not so much in the small towns where you ask a favour and it might be done but maybe like the next week or something, if that. But it's alright. They mean well, the funny little pig bearers and horse wallers and the equestrian voodoo people. They're not really voodoo people, they're much more sound than that. But they are quite wealthy. And I think that's because they've invested their life wisely in good in business decisions, healthy amounts of work, quality investment strategies, and not spending their fortune on drugs, which is what the poor people generally do. And you'll find, quite fascinatingly, there's a clear and direct correlation between lots of poor people who take drugs and rich people who don't touch the shit. 